According to President Zelensky, Ukraine says its military has officially, Ukraine has officially launched its spring counter offense. Officially, officially. Officially, officially. Heavy according battles. To according, it's now official. Heavy battles, which had been ongoing for a long, long time, now being reported on the eastern front there, the eastern part of the country after Kyiv launched a wave of attacks this is just over the weekend. Ukraine has recaptured already multiple Russian-controlled villages, and this latest push, a counterpunch, is Ukraine's most rapid advance into Russian-controlled territory in more than six months. Myani Jones, with our partners at the BBC, joins us now. Uh, Myani, thank you very much for, for being here. Thank you very much for your coverage there in Ukraine. Um, what is the target ultimately for uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers there in this counterpunch? I think the ultimate goal here is to regain as much territory as possible from Russian forces. They're focusing on the eastern region of Donetsk and the neighboring uh, area of Zaporizhia to try and regain as much territory as possible. That's ultimately uh, their fundamental goal. But at the moment, they've only claimed to have reconquered five settlements. These are quite small villages uh, in the Donetsk region. Uh, they only have a population of just above 2,000 people. But I think the reason why they're mentioning them this early on is because on Saturday, President Zelensky uh, finally admitted that the counteroffensive was on the way. This is something that Ukrainian officials hadn't confirmed at the very beginning. And once he said that publicly, then Ukrainian authorities started talking about how much territory they were regaining. So still very early days, uh, still a small number of settlements, but Ukrainian authorities keen to get a message out there that their counteroffensive is very much underway and that they're making some progress. And in these eastern and southern regions, can you uh, just remind us why are they relevant? Why are they strategic? Why here? I mean, these are the regions that are closest to Russia, and these are the regions that have been most tightly contested with uh, Russian forces. They also have some critical infrastructure, particularly uh, bridges that link the mainland of Ukraine to the Crimean Peninsula. I think the ultimate goal for Ukrainian forces would be to try and sever the links between the mainland and the peninsula to try and isolate it and perhaps ultimately bring it back under their control. That would be a huge coup for them. But at the moment, as I said, still very early days in this counteroffensive, uh, and this will probably take a few more months still, but certainly Ukrainian forces will want to get the bulk of the work done before the winter arrives. At the moment, the weather is much milder than it usually is here. And so this allows them to hopefully uh, regain some territory from Russian forces. Mayani, I was surprised over the weekend to see a headline uh, about 100 soldiers on each side, 100 Russian soldiers, 100 Ukrainian soldiers uh, in a swap, uh, in exchange there on the battlefield. What, wh why did this come to be? Uh, what more do we know about it? Yeah, this is something that seems to happen quite frequently, but that isn't necessarily always reported on by the media, uh, these prisoner swaps by both sides. And this time, it appears that about 200 prisoners of war, the Ukrainians say, were released uh, between both sides on Sunday. Overall, more than 2,000 soldiers have been swapped in this conflict. Wow. Uh, during fighting, uh, soldiers are seized, and it appears that each side will negotiate with the other to try and get some of their prisoners swapped. All right, Myani Jones with the BBC, the eyes of the world there uh, in Ukraine. Myani, thank you very much.